Hi everyone, I'm Zoe Saldana and I play Neytiri in Avatar and uh, I'm so excited because we are celebrating the 10th year anniversary of Avatar and, um, and you guys had some questions and we are here to answer them to the best of our abilities and I'm excited, I'm excited to get into this. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in and for all of your support and for being devoted fans to, to the Avatar saga. And obviously we can't wait for two and three to come out. And, and uh, so here goes. <laughs> okay, first question. When you signed on to be an Avatar, did you have any sense that it would become the phenomenon that it ultimately became? Um, no. I, I was just excited to be working with my idol, James Cameron, and to be playing this, this amazing alien jungle princess uh, that didn't really understand what it meant to, to, to lie and all those things. Like I was just always so curious and, and diving into my character. I had great hopes for the movie because it felt special from the beginning, but for it to have had the impact that it had uh, globally was uh, it exceeded any expectations that I had and I'm pretty sure that a lot of my cast members and uh, and the crew you know can familiarize with that because it was just it was unimaginable and it was a dream come true as this was an ambitious and uncharted idea for a new film what drew you to want to be involved James Cameron James Cameron drew me to want to be involved when the creator of Sarah Connor uh, calls and uh, you're like this, this, you know, young actress from New York, from Queens, New York, actually. And he sees your audition and he believes in your potential. And then when you meet him, you audition for him and he invites you to join the cast. Uh, that was the reason as to why I wanted to do it. I feel like if he tells me to jump, I do jump. And not because he's like this big, big director, but because he's such an exceptional human being and the most generous and amazing director I've worked with. There was so much secrecy behind the film, I know. What were you able to share with your family or friends? I think, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to confess, I shared a great deal of uh, what I was doing with my family, not really with my friends, um, because I was afraid <laughs> of being indiscreet, but with my family, because I really needed the support. I've, at times, I felt when we started shooting that I was way in over my head, and, um, and I, I would get filled with like self-doubt, and my family would always encourage me and give me that boost of confidence and also they were rooting for the story because I had shared with them a, a lot of you know the plot and but I did I told them if you guys ever tell anybody boyfriends cousins like neighbors I am going to <laughs> was there a moment from reading the script or filming where you said there's no way they're going to be able to do this and then they did it uh yeah yeah, especially when I would I would be eavesdropping on conversations that either Jim was having with the crew and they were trying to figure out a shot. You know, it just it sometimes I would have this split feeling that I wasn't on a set, but I was at a in a lab and we were trying to get away with you know building this experiment that has never been done before. And uh, but to see them jump into the unknown and 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 ace it all the time with an open heart, an open mind, and adding all of their experience into it, um, it made me always want to be a part of the pack. What kind of training did you have to do for the part? Ooh, oh, everything. It was, uh, you know, from learning to dehumanize myself, any kind of human pattern of, of characteristics that humans do, like nodding your face, you know, nodding your head when you, to say yes, or shaking and to say no. All those things the Na'vi don't do. Um, so there was a lot of work, a lot of body work, and a lot of behavioral uh, work that I had to do. And then uh, when it came to physical training, it was archery and it was horseback riding. Um, it was uh, wushu, which is a very graceful form of martial arts that I, I grew up to like after I, you know, I trained. And um, a lot of fitness because I needed to have that kind of endurance uh, that the Navi have. They're just so gracious and and you know wonderful and just tall and gorgeous and and um, and I needed to make sure that I can bend my knees and I can run on command. So there's a lot of training. Neytiri has to shoot a bow left-handed. Did you need to learn how to do that? Um, the advantage that I have and. Uh, 
and that Jim has is that we're both left-handed and I almost feel like he purposely made the Navi all left-handed <laughs> because of that, <laughs> because he's left-handed. So I did have that advantage. Um, it was a little bit challenging at first because, you know, when you hold a bow, you have to kind of like, you know, hold it this way, but the Navi hold it that way. And, um, but once I got it, uh, even today, if I practice archery, which by the way, I don't know if he can actually indulge you guys with this, but I have really good aim. Um, I can only shoot like a Navi. I cannot do archery like a human. Go figure. What is something you know about Neytiri that no one else knows? Um, that she's shy. <laughs> she's very shy and uh, and when she doesn't feel comfortable in a situation, she retaliates with, with physical, you know, aggression. Um, but um, yeah, that she's really shy and, and she's filled with self-doubt. And it's not until she meets Jake that she gains whatever confidence she had lost when the humans invaded her planet. And she felt like she can, she can save her people. What's your favorite line of dialogue from the movie? I think it's not really a favorite line. I've, obviously, I see you um, is, uh, is such a powerful uh, phrase for us, and it means a lot. And, uh, but to me, it was, a, it was a word that Jim came up with to call Jake names, like when Natir was calling him names, like, oh my god, you dummy, or something. And it's called skang. And um, I, we used to say it all the time, still do. Do you speak not V fluently? How hard was it uh, to learn the language? Um, I, you know, I'm a little, I'm, I need a little more classes now. <laughs> but back then, uh, when I learned it, it was amazing. And um, I would practice it day and night. I loved the way it sounded. Because Spanish is my first language, a lot of the vowels were very similar to the way the not V uh, you know, use their, their language. So I use that to my advantage and um, I loved speaking not V. What was it like the first time you saw Neytiri in her final form on screen? I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna share with you two experiences with that. The very first time I saw Neytiri, um, it was in, she was in Jim's office and she was a sculpture of maybe two feet high and she was sitting on his, uh, she was standing on his coffee table. And I remember I was sitting in the waiting room waiting for Jim and he came over and shook my hand and he said, are you ready to meet, your, to meet yourself? And I walked with him to his office and I, the first time I laid eyes on her, she was just so extraordinary, but it was unlike anything I had ever seen. And I, I, I couldn't, I had never imagined that she was going to look that way because obviously he had conceived the story and, and, and this world from his imagination. So. I didn't have any references that I had seen before in films prior to that. And so it was very much a blank canvas when I walked into the office and it was amazing. The very first time I saw her on screen and she moved <laughs> was surreal. I just kept pinching myself because I just didn't, I just couldn't believe that, I don't know, a, a brown girl from Queens, New York, that's Latina, you know, would get to work with someone like James Cameron and, and, uh, and he was giving me the right, you know, to incarnate this woman um, that I just completely became enamored with. With whom, where, and how did you watch the film for the first time? Um, I, uh, you know, it's so funny because I can't really remember. Jim always shared with us every every time he had a scene cut together that Weta would deliver to him in in a form that was semi-finished and so I, I felt that by the time I got to see the full full movie um, oh, I think it was at Lightstorm and it was with a lot of Jim's colleagues and some family members of his and maybe I think Sam was there Sam and I and I remember I was very quiet after I saw the movie because one thing you, I, you know, people don't really know about me is that when I'm awestruck or when I'm sort of shaken, you know, in, in my spirit, I tend to get really introverted and very quiet. And Jim took it as, uh, 
as as a bad thing and he sent me this email the next day like oh what happened are you not happy like is 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 there something wrong and and then obviously i spilled my guts in this email to him uh, of of things that i was unable to say in person because i needed to digest just the wonderful thing that that, that the vision the wonderful vision that my eyes had sort of witnessed you know and um and it and it hit me in stages after i went home so there were a lot of emails that i sent jim uh the following days because of it um, what has playing this character taught you about yourself that I get emotional that, um, that if I set my mind to it, I can achieve anything if I have a support system, if I have a team of people that look at me and say, I see you and I believe in you and I know you can do this, um, then I can, I can achieve anything. Now that Pandora exists at Walt Disney World, yay! I went, by the way, it was awesome. Um, what was it like experiencing that world for the very first time in real life? It was exciting, it was youthful, it, it was giddy. Um, I also got to share it with my sisters and, and um, because they traveled with me to Florida to go experience the world of Pandora and to get on the ride as well. And, and that, was, that was magical. Ten years later, why do you think Avatar continues to have lasting resonance around the world? It's a story that um, reflects a lot of events uh, that we, we have lived through as a human society. And um, it almost felt prophetic that if we continue to add weight to the imbalance of life and we continue to just take not just from each other, uh, but also from our environment without ever giving back or recycling, you know, that gift um, of, of receiving, you know, life, uh, then that, you know, we are responsible for, for the demise of mankind and of planet Earth. So that to me was um, the lasting resonating message that I always took from Avatar. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your questions. They were actually wonderful. Um, I would have I would have answered twenty more. You guys have no idea. This means a lot. This means a lot. And and I want to wish Jim and everybody, the whole tribe, that put Avatar together and delivered it to your you know to your hands and your heart. I want to say thank you. I want to say congratulations. And I want to say happy birthday, Pandora. <laughs>